this video I'm going to have a brief uh, discussion with you all about menopause and here we go menopause is basically uh, the cessation of menses or amenorrhea uh, amenorrhea uh, either physiologically or iatrogenically uh, either because of the woman's natural uh, hormonal processes or because of something that uh, was caused uh, either surgically or uh, accidentally um, there's a lot of things that happen in menopause and I am going to touch about um, most of them uh, briefly um, in this presentation so by definition it's the absent of men absent uh, of menses for one year one year by definition and the average age in North America, Canada, United States is 51, 51 years of age. So what exactly is happening? Well, it's a very, very simple process of hormonal changes. So this line here represents menopause. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll add some years, plus two, plus four, plus six, plus eight years after menopause, and then some years before menopause and then we're gonna draw the hormone level so this first one is representing estrogen so as you can see estrogen levels decline the next couple hormones oh, I'll use a different color what the heck uh, we we'll use we we'll use this one here to represent FSH. Well, it's the same color. I, th I said I would use, use a different one. I'm using the same color. Well, let's see if I can. Oh, there we go. Now I got a different color. And this one, as most of you probably figured out by now, is LH. So that's what's happening in menopause. And this is I've seen this on the licensing exams where they ask about the relationship between these three hormones before and after menopause. So these two after menopause go up. This one goes down, very simply put. All right, so those are the hormonal changes. And as a result, a woman goes into menopause and has quite a few um, symptoms. I really don't use a lot of mnemonics in my day, but there's one that I really like, and it's called Havoc. And it's used to describe what's going on in menopause. The first one is hot flashes, okay? Now, hot flashes um, uh, is exactly what it sounds like. A woman will feel warm or hot, and she may even perspire, or sometimes perspire profusely, and the core, core temperature will change. Second thing is atrophic vaginitis. You're using both uh, letters here, interestingly. Vaginitis. Now, why does this happen? This is directly in correlation to the... Uh, uh, lower uh, decreased est estrogen levels and it causes vaginal dryness and this can re lead to irritation and dysuria. The O is osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis happens because uh, when the body's estrogen levels decline the bones start to get resorbed by the osteoclasts. You may remember the osteoclasts are what are involved in the bone resorption that occurs when estrogen levels decline. The final the letter here is uh, just uh, they put it in there as coronary artery disease, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. So these are some of the symptoms of uh, menopause. Now, how do you diagnose menopause? The diagnosis is really clinical. You know, there really isn't specific tests. Um, if a woman is still sexually active and she's a little on the young side to go through menopause, you might want to do a, a pregnancy test because amenorrhea can also occur when someone's pregnant. Uh, the hormone levels really are not used, to be honest, uh, to diagnose um, the menopause. But as we discussed earlier, they do change, um, so they can be used as an indicator. Now, finally, we get into the treatment. Now, the treatment uh, really is uh, directed toward uh, managing the symptoms. So the first one, if you remember, the hot flashes, uh, those are managed... Uh, and there's, and there's a few ways. The first way is, believe it or not, these medications that you remember, so serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, they are used to manage hot flashes. And there's a few that I'll list. There's fluoxetine, 
there's uh, paroxetine, and there's another one called sertraline. Okay, they can they also use uh, SNRIs, which are serotonin nor norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and there's one in particular that's very popular. It's called venlafaxin. Okay, uh, so that's what they use to treat hot flashes. Now, what about what about the other one, which is atrophic vagina? What do you? How do you treat that? Well, you remember what this was caused by decreased estrogen levels. So the obvious treatment would be to give estrogen, but you don't just give it as a pill. Topical forms are really what are preferred. Topical estrogen creams are used to treat that. And then the the other one, which is osteoporosis, that is managed by giving the famous bis phosphonates bisphosphonates and there's two in particular that are very popular you have alendronate and you have ibandronate okay so that's the treatment now let's talk briefly about hormone replacement therapy hormone replacement therapy very very famous topic well, as, as most of you know, hormone replacement therapy has its pros and cons, right? The pros are that, um, well, very, very briefly, I mean, pros are that it's a treatment in menopause. You know, it makes a woman feel better. It replaces what she's lost. And what are we giving? Well, we're giving estrogen. We're giving the person, we're giving the woman something that she has declined in. And it makes women feel much better it really does but there's risks involved and I'll, I'll talk about the cons in a, just about 30 seconds I just want to mention one thing before I go on to the cons is that estrogen is given uh, alone only if a woman has had a hysterectomy okay hysterectomy if a woman still has her uterus you give estrogen plus progesterone okay why is that well because if a woman still has her uterus okay and you give just estrogen alone that unopposed estrogen can increase the risk of getting endometrial cancer so if she still has her uterus you have to give combination therapy all right so it's so great why don't we just give it to everybody well because hormone replacement therapy HRT hormone replacement therapy has its cons and what are the, some of them well there it's a pretty pretty impressive list of cons increased incidence of breast cancer stroke DVT deep venous thrombosis pulmonary embolism dementia and coronary artery disease so yeah, it's a pretty big list here. So hormone replacement therapy, uh, the risks and benefits have to be weighed and you have to decide uh, whether you want to give it or not. Fortunately, there's other uh, treatment options for to manage the symptoms that we talked about earlier. So that's a brief presentation about menopause.